Hi there, I'm Lee Robertson. Welcome to the Tax Panel. Joining me in the studio to unpack some of the tax changes are Marcus Boerter from BDO Tax Services, Alex Guala from Deloitte, and member of the SACA Employees Tax Committee, as well as Associate Director and Global, Global Mobility Services and Employment Tax Advisory at KPMG, Sirika Rotenbach. Welcome to you all. Okay, so no major tax changes in the budget. Is this because individual taxpayers are saturated at top of the laffer curve and companies are hamstrung by the poor economy? I think it's a combination of the saturation. Um, there was really no scope to increase taxes any further. Yeah. And also I think the budget was a very well-balanced budget in terms of all the stakeholder input that the ministry has received because we seem to have listened to unions, we seem to have listened to the individuals and the focus this year it's been the corporates. So before we get into the details, so what do you two think? Do you think this was a balanced budget? Was it a budget for Moody's? Um, not, not entirely sure. Um, I think what um, is very welcome relief is uh, the fact that individuals uh, will be paying less taxes. It's been a long time since um, the individual taxpayers uh, got any relief from SARS. The last time there was a change in the tax brackets was in 2017-2018. Um, so your, your individuals have really been feeling, feeling it for the last couple of years. Um, at least with the um, changes, there's supposed to be relief of um, close to 2 billion rand uh, for your individual taxpayers. Yeah, and Alex, uh, you were speaking before the show, you were saying that it was about how time they got some and balanced. I mean, for the last, what, four years now, uh, taxpayers have been complying even with those high increases yeah. in different taxes. And quite honestly, if you look at how they've been increasing taxes in the last four years, they will uh, realize a shortfall and increase taxes just to plug mm. the hole. So the overall tax revenue collections have not been increasing drastically. So it tells you that they were just plugging the hole. Uh, yeah, so Alex, so overall it looked like they didn't increase rates, but it was a tightening. They yes, sort of yes. plugged all the loopholes, and we're going to get into some of those. Yes. So are you surprised that there was no change in VAT? No. I don't think it was possible to increase the VAT rate. The ramifications of that would have been huge. But then if we look at what they did with the individuals, that two billion, I'm questioning is that really a relief or is it just a PR exercise? If we go back to previous budgets, we had in the region of nine billion when they did a fiscal, fiscal drag adjustment. Mm -hmm. And that was real relief to the taxpayer. I mean, I did a quick calculation on looking at the two billion. It seems a bit flat. At the end of the day, I think at the lowest income bracket, you're going to get 61 rand a month. And if you go to the highest bracket, you're going to look at 667, mm. somewhere around there, if I'm not mistaken. You so that 61 right. rand is probably going to mm. either get you a, a head of broccoli or maybe cauliflower. <laughs> No, but you are right because maybe it is a PR exercise because it was 5.2% cut and inflation is, is expected to go higher over the next year till about 4.7%. Mm. So. so if you take the yeah. fuel levy and everything else that's yeah. in there, then there's no real inflationary relief. So was this a sneaky budget then? It was a clever budget, and I give them a 7 out of 10 for creativity. Okay, so fuel levy, I thought that was quite steep, 25 cents. Uh, the oil price allows them to do that. So you'll notice that every time the oil price is in our favor, they will take advantage of that mm. and increase the... It's a quite far-reaching impact on the economy. Overall, the yes. Uh, yeah. And it's not just on the fuel price per se. You have to look at the whole value chain that is impacted by the, the fuel price. Yeah, and of course, um, tobacco and alcohol and vaping. <laughs> That's a new one. Yes. <laughs> I think it's um, interesting to see them move towards um, levying the tax on the electronic tobacco products. Yeah. Um, maybe just as bad for your health as a cigarette. Um, so, you know, potentially a, a good cause behind the tax. So sort of like the sugar tax. Sort of like that. <laughs> Which, interestingly enough, has completely just disappeared. So I, I didn't see it on the, yeah. on the detail here. Yeah. I mean, there's carbon and there's plastic bag. So if you look at carbon, it looks like the, the revenue, 
they're budgeting for there is 1750 and the plastic bag levy is 250 which again brings us back to the 2 billion that we're giving to the individuals. Yeah. That was an interesting well, one. Well, I totally endorse the plastic ones and the plastic bags, and they're also looking at extending that to single-use plastics. Yeah. Okay, so um, on to some of the changes for individuals. So fiscal drag, some slight relief, also some slight relief in the medical tax credits went up by nine rand a month. <laughs> Look, I think the, the small increase in the medical scheme fees tax credit is um, in line with uh, what the 2018 budget review said, where um, they mentioned that these credits will be reduced at a rate less than inflation in order to um, redirect funds for the, the national health insurance eventually. Um, so it's, it's not unexpected that those increases are much lower. Um, again, an increase this year, whereas last year there was no increase whatsoever. Yeah. Um, but if really for taxpayers, the tax-free savings account went up by 3,000 rand, 33 <coughs> to 36. That's not much. Uh, so not in, enough. In, in my view, it's not enough. Uh, if you look at people that are taking advantage of that tax saving, are really people that can afford uh, so people again, that, it's the upper end. Yeah. yeah, they don't save at all. So people that were targeted are not taking advantage of it mm. because they just don't have disposable income to, to save. Was there anything on retirement uh, fund contributions in this budget? Did, did they stimulate uh, savings through that mechanism, Marcus? They did mention that uh, between Provident Retirement Annuity and uh, Pension Fund, um, that they're going to look at self-contributions. And it sounds like that's going to be part of your deduction in the future. I d I don't have, there's not much detail mm -hmm. on that, um, so we're going to have to wait for the amendment bills, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah and of but at least it's something they're considering. But again, to Alex's point, um, who's the people that uh, is contributing to these funds? It's not the low income mm -hmm. bracket. Yeah. Expat tax, Sarika, um, it caused a stir when it came in last year. Some slight relief this year. Yes, so um, the change in legislation is coming into effect on the 1st of March, so on Sunday. Um, and where the um, foreign earnings exemption was uh, basically reined in to only allow for 1 million rand to be exempt, uh, where the person is rendering services offshore. Um, that 1 million has now been increased to 1.25 million. Um, the, the change is welcome. Um, however, uh, you also need to keep in mind that um, the individuals who are claiming this exemption are people working offshore, meaning that what they earn is usually not denominated in South African yeah. rands. Um, you get to that 1 million, 1.2 million Rand cap very, very quickly. Yes, in real money. <laughs> so, so the 181 yes. days proviso fell away. And now if you work overseas, you have to pay tax on the money above that, that exemption. Even if there's a DTA, how does the DTA come into it? So um, the 183-day rule has not fallen away. Um, the same rules apply. The person is still required to be out of the country for more than 183 days in a 12-month period, of which um, 60 days are continuous. So they still need to tick the boxes on those requirements. Um, the change is that instead of all of their foreign employment income being exempt, only now with the change, mm -hmm. 1.25 million rand will be exempt. Where there's a double taxation agreement in place, um, and even in the absence of a double taxation agreement, if the person is paying taxes in a foreign country, they're eligible to claim a foreign tax credit in South Africa. Mm -hmm. So. Um, in respect of countries with tax rates lower than South Africa, the individuals are going to end up paying tax in South Africa. Where the um, tax rate is higher, uh, it will basically take away the South African tax liability. Has there been much pushback to that tax, to the expat tax? A lot. Well, uh, I, mean, I mean, the issue that I have with that, for me, whether it's 1 million or 1.25, it makes no difference. The guys, expatriates, when they go to these countries, there's a lot of fringe benefits that they get afforded. And if you look at it, security, um, Housing, school like fees, yeah. you, you easily reach 
that one million one point two five. So for me, whether it was one million one point two five, it makes no difference. It's still an issue for an expatriate. That's that's my mm. personal opinion. And it's still a hated tax. It's yeah. still a hated tax. I completely yeah. agree with you. But what was interesting, I think, when we started with this, it was quite controversial, and we yeah. were looking at a one point five million rand cap, Actually, and then. The very first uh, mention of it was to abolish it completely, yeah. which of course caused a massive uproar. That's where they, that's where they started. The million was a compromise. Yes. Yeah. Treasury but wanted then, to tax the whole thing. But then what happened was the date didn't change because it's always remained Sunday, which, yes. is, which is arriving very soon. <laughs> and then this budget, they just snuck in the extra 250,000. Yeah, an oddity. A quick comment on capital gains tax. I couldn't see anything, any changes there, really. Look, in my view, I think they're now trying to be innovative, uh, which is something that we have been looking for new areas. Asking for. <laughs> yeah, I mean, instead of uh, always going for the the rates, if you look at what's happened with the CGT, this this was introduced in 2001. Uh, it's gone up to. 80% in terms of what you pay tax on versus the 33% that was uh, originally exempt. Mm. And they've increased the rate only once, I think from 15 to 20%. Correct. For me, that's one of the ways that you can be innovative. Uh, you don't always have to go for the rate, but look at ways of making changes so that you target the right people. Uh, there was also a proposal which I thought it was going to come through here. They were looking at taxing the growth on the asset mm -hmm. without you disposing of the asset. And that, that would be harsh. That would be harsh, but for me, that's also another innovative way of. Uh, Alex, what do you mean by targeting the, the right people, targeting the wealthy? I would say yes. Um, I mean, if, if you listen back, I mean, what, five, six years ago, there was this buzzword, uh, what, what, uh, I can't remember what it was called, but the tax that was going to be introduced to target the, the wealthy. Yeah, I think it was a wealth tax. Yeah, and yes. it's called that even. That yeah. thing I think was, that was also a Davis mm -hmm. Tax then, Committee proposal. Yes. Uh, and the, the view at the time was we already have wealth taxes. All you need to do is to strengthen what you have instead of introducing your taxes. Mm. And, and talking about that, was nothing more on donations tax, in estate duties, Rika? Mm. All, of, all of those seem to have stayed exactly the mm. same. Everything touching on individuals was kind of a no-go area in this budget, which yeah. is very welcome. But on the CGT, the one thing I did pick up was uh, with controlled foreign companies and loop structures. So they seem to have aligned in this budget with um, the exchange control. So where there are loop structures and you have a dispensation on the loop structure if you're below certain thresholds, um, you could have uh, kind of bypassed the CGT. Where now they're saying that uh, where there's CGT and you get a participation exemption for your controlled foreign company, um, if those assets are South African assets, you're going to pay CGT. Mm. So as usual, in, in most budgets, the devil really does lie yeah, in, in the in detail. detail. Okay. So we're going to a quick break now, but when we come back, we're going to be looking at a company's tax and how SMEs are impacted.